Good morning, guys. I hope everyone's having a really nice day. We are almost at the end of February. I can feel spring is right around the corner. And today I want to share with you guys some of my February favorites. So some of these things are old favorites. Some of these things are new favorites. Um, just some stuff that came to mind that I have been loving or things I wanted to share with you guys. So I hope that you're in the mood for some coffee and talking about some really nice items, a new perfume to my collection and things like that. If you're new here, I would love if you would consider subscribing. You can also feel free to head over and follow me on Instagram. Instagram. And with that out of the way, let's get started in today's favorites video. All right, guys. So the first favorite of February is a perfume. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, then you've seen a couple of posts with this perfume. This is the Maison Francis Kirk John Paris Gentle Fluidity Gold. So I am a huge fan of a lot of the MFK fragrances. Um, I really love Baccarat Rouge. Gentle Fluidity Gold is one that kind of I went back and forth with like I had to take my time with this one the first time I ever tried this perfume was probably almost three years ago and when I first tried it it was way too strong for me I found it really headache inducing in hindsight I think I just wasn't spraying it properly and I wasn't wearing it properly and it is a really strong fragrance so you do have to go lightly with this one it does have the potential to kind of choke you out and give you a headache if you spray too much but this is such a beautiful vanilla scent and actually what kind of changed my mind about it was the last time I was down on vacation, I tried this at a um, Saks Fifth Ave and I wore it on my skin for the whole time that we were there that day. And by the end of the day, I just was really enjoying catching little whiffs of this and I had only sprayed one spray on the inside of my elbow and with that one spray it was gentle enough it wasn't like giving me a headache it wasn't too strong or anything like that and I kept on asking my boyfriend what do you think about this scent he really liked it and it just made me feel very expensive and very sophisticated it's such a pretty vanilla but it's such an upscale classy smelling vanilla so the notes that you have in gentle fluidity gold are vanilla amber, musk, woody notes, juniper berry, nutmeg, and coriander. So what makes this perfume special is that it has a little bit of that spicy touch to it from the coriander and the nutmeg. So there's this little bit of a spice in the background and then it kind of smells like sparkling almost and bright. And it has this like foresty touch to it from the juniper berry that's in there. And it just smells really elegant. Yeah, it just smells really, really elegant. There's something about it. It is one of the most special vanillas I think that's on the market um, and such a compliment getter. I actually wore this out for a date night the other night with my boyfriend and I got compliments from two different people that night. And yeah, it just smells like expensive, luxurious. It is probably the most fancy vanilla in my collection. I have a lot of vanilla perfumes, but this one, and I would say that like my Luby Rouge from Christian Louboutin, which is still a favorite, that one smells expensive, but this one smells more glamorous. There's something about gentle fluidity that is yeah, there's just something about it that's just a little bit more glamorous and smells a little bit more kind of bougie and luxurious and sparkling, and I just really really love it. So I'm really happy to have this one in my collection. If you've tried this one before and it was too strong for you or you found it too headachey or something like that, like it did with me, I would say spray a little bit lighter and just one spray far away from your face and just give it some time and see how you feel about it. Because yeah, it's definitely, definitely one of my favorite vanilla perfumes in my collection and just makes me feel so fancy. Like if I'm going out for a date, it's such an easy reach. The second February love is my most go-to kind of skin product for makeup, and this is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream. So this is a color correcting full coverage cream with SPF 50 as well. So I don't rely on this just for SPF, obviously. I always go in with a separate SPF, but I appreciate that this also has a little bit of an added benefit of some SPF as well. And this is in the color Fair Porcelain. So I kind of wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this when I first got it. At first I thought it was too full coverage and too thick, but I realized as with most things, I was applying too much. A little bit of this goes such a long way. The price is really good. This is going to last forever. It's a perfect skin match for me. And yeah, I literally just dot like a few little dots all over my face, blend it in, and it just looks flawless. It has really good coverage. Um, I think I'm most impressed with I think the coverage but also the shade matte. I was really happy that this one worked for me and this is kind of my go-to now like if I'm going out of town if I'm going out on a date if I'm zipping out like during the day even going to the gym and I just want like a little bit of kind of spot concealing this is almost good enough you could use it as a concealer that's how good the coverage is 
and I just really like it. Also, the packaging is super compact, really easy to slip in your bag if you're going away for the weekend. So I'm really, really impressed with this. The next favorite is a cleansing oil. So you guys know that I have been using the Palmer's Cocoa Butter Cleansing Oil for face for a probably, I don't know, a year to two years already. And that one for me kind of reached holy grail status because I just kept repurchasing it because I liked it. It worked. However, I've always wanted to try the Hada Labo cleansing oil. Um, I think because I saw Dr. Dre talking about it. And as you can see, I'm almost halfway through this container and I absolutely love this cleansing oil, you guys. What I like about it is it has this very, very subtle, light, pleasant scent. Not strong. It doesn't smell fragrance, but it has this very subtle, light, kind of oil scent to it. It just has this like pleasant, luxurious scent to it. It really does a nice job of breaking up my makeup. It's fairly lightweight. It gets off all my sunscreen, gets off all my mascara, so it works really well. The price is pretty good. I think I paid about $25 for this Canadian, something like that, um, which is a little bit more expensive than my Palmer's Cocoa, but I actually like the consistency of this better than the Palmer's Cocoa Butter. I didn't want to say it, because I know that I've turned a lot of you onto the Palmer's, which is still a great product. And I actually have a bottle open in my linen closet right now that I'm kind of working my way through. But I am really, really impressed with this Hada Labo. If you guys have been tempted, like you heard people talk about it, this is definitely worth it. Definitely check it out. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's one of the nicest cleansing oils I've ever used. And I can see this one becoming holy grail status. Also, I think they sell the... Um, oil itself like the refills separately so you don't have to keep going through bottles um, and I can see myself buying this one again and again and again I just really really like it. it leaves my skin soft does a good job of cleaning the next favorite is a Scentsy bar or a Scentsy wax I guess and this is one of the huge bricks my sister-in-law actually gave this to me I was so grateful because when I, I told you guys that the reason I started using Scentsy is because I actually went to go visit my brother and my sister-in-law and when I went into her house her house smelled so good and I said, what are you burning? And she said it was the sugar cookie scent from Scentsy. And that was when something like a, a switch flipped in my head. And I was like, okay, I have to go check out this Scentsy business. I switched over. I told you guys because I was using Bath and Body Works candles up until this point And while I love the candles, they're a little bit more high maintenance. First of all, they're kind of wasteful. You have you have all the glass and everything. Secondly, I don't like that it's not a really clean burn. I feel like it releases a lot of like smoke and stuff into the air, especially when you blow them out, which I don't like. Um, I feel like it's very expensive. The candles are expensive. Plus, you have to always light them, blow them out. It's just more work. Whereas with a wax warmer, you just turn it on, turn it off. There's no blowing anything out. There's no smoke. Um... And there's also no risk of fire hazard either with this. Whereas with a candle, I always had to be careful. So there was just like a lot of different reasons, not to mention the scents with the Scentsy, I think are so unique and original. They always have so many beautiful fragrances and they're a little bit more affordable than the Bath and Body Works as well. So this, you guys, you can see I have gone through, I have gone through four um, little blocks of this and this is a massive brick. And in my opinion, in my humble opinion, you guys, this is the best scent from Scentsy. If you start using Scentsy or if you have access to it, see if you can get the sugar cookie. It smells like, if I had to compare this to something and it doesn't smell like it, but it gives the same vibes as Killian Princess. <laughs> it's like cozy, but it's bright and kind of like pretty at the same time. It's not too gourmand. It's just like really, really pretty. So again, doesn't smell like Killian Princess, but if Killian Princess was a wax cube, it would be this, it would be this, um, this wax cube because yeah, it's just like a little bit gourmand, but not too gourmand. It's pretty, it's bright. It's, it just makes my house smell so beautiful. I have a couple of other scentsy uh, scents that I really, really like, but this one definitely like tops it for me. And I was kind of sad because I went on the scentsy website to get backups and I couldn't find it. So I don't know if this comes out just once every I don't know, maybe it'll come out again in the fall. The next item is actually a really affordable watch. So you guys, look at how gorgeous this watch is. I mean, you can't tell me this isn't a beautiful watch. This was from Amazon and it was like $35. It's by the brand Anne Klein, which isn't a particularly high-end brand, but I just, like I told you guys in one of my most recent declutters, I'm kind of over the whole round face watch thing. I really prefer a rectangular watch face. I don't know why. To me, they just, they give Cartier vibes. They're very 
pretty. They're very like sophisticated looking. This is also the perfect size of watch face for me because I'm quite petite. I've got really small wrists and such a pretty watch. So it's this two-tone metal. You've got a little bit of gold in there and you've got a little bit of silver as well. And the watch face itself is very, very plain and basic. There's no Roman numerals or anything. There is a second hand, which is awesome. I could wear this to work if I needed to. I actually recently just went and got it sized and I just really love it. It's the perfect watch for just like everyday wear. You can stack this with your more expensive jewelry and it just looks really beautiful. Such a pretty watch. So yeah, I really... Um, would recommend this if you're looking for a really elegant looking simple watch and you don't want to spend a lot of money just skip all the higher end brands and just go for Anne Klein nobody you know who cares like no one's going to know the difference between this from a distance and something higher end and what I like about some of these more like entry level designer like um Anne Klein and even more like Ted Baker and Kate Spade and stuff like that um they give you like the high-end luxury look with pretty good quality, but they don't break the bank. That's what I like about it. So it's not some cheap, like, I don't know how I got such a good deal on it. I think it was like a Christmas deal. I think it was regular $65 or something and it was on sale. The next February love is actually this piece of jewelry. And this is a little ring. This is a little pearl ring that I got from Amazon. And you guys know if you watch my channel, I love pearls. Um, I have had lots of pearl jewelry in the past. I just think pearls are so pretty. You cannot go wrong with them. The reason I like this is because it is a uh, gold, 14 karat gold plated. So it is good quality. It's not going to tarnish or turn your skin green or anything like that. Really affordable. And this one is adjustable. So it's fully, fully adjustable. So my uh, fingers range between the size five and a half to six and a half. So I can wear this on any of my fingers. Just so pretty. Yeah, super pretty and super dainty. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money when it comes to little accessory jewelry like this, especially if it's something you only wear once in a while. Um, I just really love pearls. I think pearls look very elegant and they also have this in a lot of different variations. They have one with like a jumbo size pearl. I'm actually tempted to get that one. I think that would be really pretty, but just for something like very minimalistic, you can get, you can get, and you can see it's a little big on my ring finger, but you can get something like this. Um, you know, something very small and very dainty that just would work for like any occasion going out for dinner. You can put this on, um, mixing and matching, stacking your rings. This works really well stacked with all of my other rings. The next favorite is something I think I talked about in 2023 and I'm still loving it. And I think this will be kind of my go-to going forward. I love this body wash so much that I don't even want to try any other ones. So this is the Native Citrus and Herbal Musk. And I got this because it was on sale and I'd always wanted to try the Native products, but I always thought they were too expensive. So I got this on sale for like $11 Canadian and I absolutely love it. So this has, first of all, it does a really good job of cleaning my body. Um, it always makes me feel clean and fresh, but I love the scent, you guys. So this is the kind of scent that anyone in your family can use, whether it's a boy, girl, man, woman, whoever. To be honest, it kind of smells a little bit masculine. It almost reminds me a little bit of like an old spice um, kind of wash that my boyfriend would use, but in like a clean, I don't know, in like a clean, soapy, feminine way. And yeah, like I said, my boyfriend doesn't even mind using it because it does smell like a little bit more unisex, but it also just smells clean and soapy. Um, so when it comes to body washes and stuff, I don't use a lot of scented body washes. Like I don't use a lot of Bath & Body Works because first of all, a ton of fragrance like that is not great for the skin. And I feel like Bath & Body Works um, shower gels are really, really saturated. They're so heavy in fragrance. Like that's what they're known for. So this has fragrance, but it feels very gentle and it doesn't it doesn't smell or feel overly scented and it doesn't leave that scent for like the whole day after you get out of the shower. It goes away pretty quick. It just smells really nice while you're in the shower and it leaves me feeling and smelling clean and fresh, but it doesn't make me smell like I've sprayed myself with a perfume. And so when it comes to body washes, I prefer something that just smells, I've told you guys before, just soapy, clean, and fresh. I still want it to smell nice, but I want it to be more in that like clean, fresh direction, not so much in the perfumed, like floral direction if that makes sense and this is just absolutely perfect i know my daughter has the um coconut vanilla one i got it for her for christmas and i haven't tried that one but i think i would like to try that one too but this is the first native product i've ever tried and i just i just really like it so this is still a favorite an old favorite but still a favorite another favorite is a makeup favorite and this again is an oldie but still a favorite so 
I apologize if this video is not all new stuff, but I guess that's a good thing because that means that I'm consistent with some of my things that I love and just keep getting on repeat. So this is the Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara, and this is still a love for me. Like it's a love all the time. I feel like every month I can include this in a love video because this is just one of my favorite mascaras I think ever of all time. It is a tubing mascara. It makes my lashes look way thicker and way longer than they are. And it's easy to wash off. It just comes off like a dream. All you have to do to um, remove this is just soak your lashes, like soak your face in lukewarm water. After a minute or two, it just slips right off of your lash in one long piece. It doesn't like um, come off on your skin. You don't have to like rub it away or wash it away or anything. I did try the Tartlet tubing mascara and in my opinion, this is way better than the Tartlet because I think it actually makes my lashes look better and it is easier to wash off. I'll show you guys what the wand looks like. That's what the wand looks like. And I'm sure you guys have seen pictures online and like before and afters of what this does to people's lashes, but it's just awesome. It's it li it literally does look like lash extensions. It's and I actually get compliments on my eyelashes when I wear this. Even my boyfriend complimented me and said that he liked my lashes when I put this on. And he's a man. He doesn't normally <laughs> comment on those kind of things. So another love is another um, oil cleanser. So I only have three oil cleansers slash cleansing bombs at the moment that are on rotation in my closet. I have the Palmers. I have the Hotelabo that's currently in my bathroom, and I have this one. This one was highly recommended to me by somebody on Instagram and I can't remember who recommended it, but I have to say thank you to them. If you are that person and you're watching this video, thank you so much for recommending this. This is one of the nicest oil cleansers I've ever used. Um, I haven't used it enough to know if I like it better than the Hada Labo, but it's definitely comparable to the Hada Labo. So this is the Anua Heartleaf Pore Control Cleansing Oil. And a lot of people say that this actually helps clear their pores because obviously oil likes oil, oil dissolves oil. So if you have like whiteheads or anything like that, obviously oil is going to help dissolve that and get rid of it. And I see, I've seen some pretty like convincing videos of people getting rid of whiteheads and stuff using this cleanser, but I feel like it should be the same for all like cleansing oils. I don't know for sure. So I haven't used this long enough to be able to say, yes, it helps clean your pores better. I can't say that. Um, what I do love about it, first of all, not that it matters that much, but the packaging is beautiful and simple. Whereas the Hada Labo has bright orange packaging, which I'm not a huge fan of. I like when things look aesthetically pleasing just as much as they're functional. Um, but secondly, this formula is really, really nice. I can't remember what it smells like. Let me see what it smells like. So this one has a little bit more of an herbal kind of scent to it. I prefer the scent of the Hada Labo better. This one has, like I say, a bit of an herbal kind of scent to it, which is fine. But this works beautifully. It it feels really nice on the skin. It feels really luxurious. It does a really good job of getting off your um, makeup and your sunscreen. And I really, really enjoy enjoyed using this. So I've used quite a, like a little bit of this already. I think I used this for about a week straight. And then I just wanted to go back and finish my other open products first. Um, but I really like this. So if you guys are looking for cleansing oils, this one and the Hada Labo are probably the two nicest I've ever tried. I'm just going to say it. I like them, I think, even better, like the experience of using them. I like even better than the Palmer's Cocoa. The Palmer's Cocoa Butter Cleansing Oil is a little thicker. It's a little richer and feels a little heavier on the skin. These are much more lightweight, which I'm kind of really enjoying. Um, so yeah, I do really, I do really like this one. I think this is one of those viral TikTok like cleansing oils. And I want to say it's a Korean one. I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, definitely this is a good one. This one and the Hada Labo two. Um, nicest oil cleansers I've tried to date. Another favorite, and this is actually an old, like something I discovered about three years ago, but I brought it back because I needed it. And I just thought I would tell you guys about it. I've been looking for a good opportunity to tell you guys about this. This is the Matrix Total Results Dark Envy Color Obsessed Red Neutralization Mask. So that is a mouthful. So this is about 15 to $20 Canadian on Amazon. What this is, is a green and purple tinted mask. And as you know, on the color wheel, green cancels out red. So this is a really highly pigmented toning mask essentially you do have to wear gloves when you use this and you have to be very careful not to get it on your shower curtain it will stain it is a very heavily pigmented mask um so this is kind of like a toner but like amped up 
by 10,000 because if you get this on your hands or your nails, your hands will be green and for like a week. <laughs> so you have to wear gloves and what you do is you shampoo your hair, you apply this to damp hair, let it sit for five to 10 minutes and then rinse it thoroughly. It is a conditioning mask. It leaves your hair silky smooth. And the whole point of this is if you have colored your hair before and it's starting to turn brassy or say you colored your hair and it turned too red or a little too orangey or too copper toned because I don't like having red undertones in my hair. My natural hair color is really cool and I have such a hard time finding a hair color that isn't too warm and also doesn't go black. So this is perfect because I can color my hair. I can get rid of grays if I have a couple grays peeking through, but if it's a little too warm toned or there's some red tones peeking through, I just pop this on the areas with the redness, rinse it out, and the hair is it, it takes away all the redness in your hair and makes it cool. One time, you guys, I'll tell you a story. One time I colored my hair, it went too light, and I had to, I removed the color, and of course when you remove color, the tone underneath is red. So my hair was like reddish brown, like auburn, and it was not attractive on me. It does not look good on me. I was so devastated. I went to the salon, they did all these treatments trying to like save my hair and fix it and tone it and put it back brown and it was just awful nothing was working you guys i had red hair and i was so upset and i probably spent two or three hundred dollars at the salon letting them do all these fancy things at the end of the day you guys i discovered this one application fixed my hair it was not red anymore it was a beautiful cool medium to dark brown it was perfect and you only have to do this once every like few shampoos or condition make sure you get the right one they actually have a shampoo and conditioner that is the same line but make sure if you're wanting the biggest bang for your buck in one treatment get the um color obsessed red neutralization mask that is the key all right i just have a couple more favorites left and yes you guys i do have a 60 ml of the la mer creme de la mer moisturizing cream which i told you in my last video i wasn't about to run out and buy and i didn't exactly run out and buy it it was a gift so i told you guys i got a sample of the creme de la mer moisturizing cream with my with a recent perfume purchase from holt renfrew which was my gentle fluidity and much to my May. I loved the La Mer Creme de La Mer. I fell in love with it. I used up the entire sample and I started immediately looking up like dupes. Where could I get it for cheaper? Was it worth the price? I was doing all this research. And here's what I'll say, you guys. I do not think it's worth the price. I do not think it's worth the price. Like, I don't even want to say how much this 60 mil cost because it cost like four times as much as a face cream should cost i think the ingredients that are in here are amazing it has really great ingredients it has sea algae which is really good for your skin it has glycerin it has panthenol um, a whole bunch of really good skin loving oils in it um, it's got some antioxidants really nice things but those ingredients are not worth the price they have definitely definitely marked up the price on this i think this is worth say $200, 150, 200, maybe even 250 for this amount, not the actual price that it is, which I'll just say it. It's a $500 face cream. But I will say that I have not found a cream that my skin loves as much as this. The consistency, you guys, how it makes my skin look and feel. My skin is really dry and sensitive. I live in Canada. Like I told you guys in my previous videos, I've been going out a lot with the dog. It's been like minus 15, minus 20. It's been windy. It's been cold. And I've been having to take my dog out for walks. My face has been getting like wind burned and it's just been really upset with me. I think just from exposing it to this cold, dry air, I don't normally stand outside for 20 minutes in minus 15 Celsius weather. I don't normally do that. And that has really taken a toll on my skin. Not that I'm saying that you need creme de la mer to fix that. What I'm saying is my skin loved this and I love everything about this. I love the way it smells. I love the way it feels. I love the way it makes my skin look. And for Valentine's day, my boyfriend asked me if there was anything fancy that I wanted. And of course, the first thing that came to mind, I said, well, there is this cream that I really want. And he said, okay, go ahead and get the cream and I'll buy it for you. He got me this cream. I probably would not have ponied up the money and bought this 
just yet. It was on my wish list, but I would have probably waited until I used up all of my other moisturizers and just not bought any other moisturizers and just like made this my one night cream. So what I will say about this is that a little bit does go a very long way. You really don't need much of this. It's really rich. It's really emollient. It gives me this like glazed donut shine before bed. It makes my skin feel wonderful. It smells pretty. It kind of smells like the Nivea cream that our grandmothers used to use, except this one goes a little bit more in that soft kind of powder direction, not so much the strong, harsh Nivea direction. So this one's a little bit less um, scented and it's a little bit more powder. Everything about it just kind of smells and feels luxurious and I just really enjoy using it. So do I think it's worth the price that they're listing it at? absolutely not. I think that they've definitely marked it up and it is a bit of a status symbol and it is a bit of a marketing thing, but in the same breath, like I've said before, if you can find me the exact same cream that smells the same, looks the same, feels the same, and has all the same ingredients at a different price, let me know and I will talk. <laughs> but in the meantime, this is my, yeah, this is, I don't know. I, I honestly can't believe I'm holding a tub of La Mer. Like never in my life did I think I would have this kind of a face, like luxury face cream in my collection, but I have to say, you guys, I'm just being honest. I really, really like it. And part of me feels guilty. Like I shouldn't enjoy it. I shouldn't be talking about it. I shouldn't be promoting it. Part of me feels like I have to defend myself. Obviously I feel like I have to explain myself and explain why, but you know, it just is what it is, you know, and it's about where you want to put your money. Like, like I told you guys before, I have about $500 of moisturizers in my linen closet that I'm not even using because they were just ones I wanted to try. And I've tried so many sunscreens and I've tried so many things that I don't really think about the cost, but it all adds up. But if I just would have put the money toward this and been done with it, this probably would have ended up saving me money if I just would have committed to one cream. So anyway, yeah, that is the La Mer. I'm going to quit justifying my actions and quit trying to feel like I have to feel guilty that I like this or that I have it. And I'm just going to use it. And I'm just going to love it because that's what life is about. Life is about not feeling guilty about using the things we love and balancing simplicity and luxury. And if I only have one night cream, but it's this one. I feel like that balances it out nicely. <laughs> All right. And we are getting close to the end of the video. I only have two other favorites for February that I want to share with you. The first one is this pair of ballet flats from Steve Madden. So these are a cap toe ballet flat, and these are new this season. I believe they just came out on the Steve Madden website, but these are just so so chic and so sophisticated and I just love them. They elevate the look of any outfit, but they are also casual and comfortable. And for me in the summertime, my go-to pair of shoes is a ballet flat. Like no matter what I'm wearing, even if I'm going out for dinner and I don't feel like wearing high heels, just doing anything and I want to feel put together, I always grab a pair of ballet flats because they just make me feel a little bit more polished. And I love the cap toe. It's definitely very Chanel inspired. Another thing I like about this shoe, it's very structured. It's not like a soft, flimsy, flexible fabric. So I feel like they're going to hold up really well. And I also like that there's just a little bit of a heel, um, about a half inch heel. So they're not completely flat. They do add a little bit of height and they just look a little bit more polished than your typical like average ballet flat. You guys, I almost forgot to mention these. This is definitely another February favorite. You know those things when you ask yourself like, what were the best purchases that I've made recently or what has made the biggest difference in my life? This is not elegant. This is not pretty. This is not whatever, but it is this pair of boots. You guys, this was the best investment. I shared this in my last wardrobe declutter and like closet tour video. I got these because obviously I've already mentioned living in Canada. It's often below zero degrees and freezing, very cold. We just got a German shepherd puppy. I walk him every day, like a couple times a day. I take him outside and play with him. He loves being outside. I needed something that was practical, that would keep my feet warm, that I I didn't want the weather to be a reason I didn't want to take my dog out for a walk. Like I didn't want to be lazy and be that like lazy dog mom who never wants to take my dog outside because of the weather. I was like, he loves being outside. It doesn't bother him. It's not that cold for him. And I need something that's going to allow me to want to actually bundle up and go out there with a smile on my face instead of feeling like, oh my gosh, this sucks. I'm so cold. I don't want to be out here. So these boots, you guys, 
these are the hyper dry waterproof boots from a company called wind river i got them from markswork warehouse here in canada and they're basically just a waterproof suede boot that are slip proof um, so you don't slip on the ice they're completely waterproof like we just went out not that long ago and they're totally dry um, they're very very warm they've got this really nice like faux fur i think it's faux fur lining really easy to get on and off you just slip your foot in and out you do them up with a drawstring they're not that cute like they're not that stylish you guys know me i like my high heels and my i prefer like over the knee flat almond toe boots or something pretty so these are not obviously like a luxury pretty thing but these were literally such a game changer like one of the best things <laughs> i've brought and actually i got these in december but I didn't use them a lot until uh, we had like one week that was really, really cold in Canada. We had like one cold week where it was like minus, literally minus 50 Celsius for like a week. <laughs> so I used them then and then it got warm-ish again. Um, and then we got like our actual winter, I guess, in end of January and February. So I have been using these nonstop every day, twice a day to take my dog for a walk. They were the greatest investment. My feet don't get cold. I don't fall. Yeah, they're they're ergonomically like designed so they kind of propel my foot forward when I walk they just they're just great they're such a good boot um I guess they're comparable to like a Sorel which is what I grew up hearing about my mom always had Sorels but you guys they like if you have a dog quit wearing Uggs <laughs> get yourself a decent pair of like actual boots that are going to protect you from the elements and keep your feet warm. I love these things. Another thing that I obviously couldn't bring up into my bedroom or didn't want to bring up in my bedroom is my coffee maker. So I told you guys that my other Keurig just all of a sudden one day decided it was going to quit working and it would not pump out coffee. I even descaled it. I cleaned it. I looked at the manufacturer stuff, nothing could save the Keurig. So I went down to my trusty Canadian Tire. Ivar and I went out on an excursion one day when it was minus 50. We went to Canadian Tire and we picked up ourselves a new Keurig. So at first when I got it, I wasn't sure if I liked the style or the design. I had to actually completely rearrange my kitchen area because it was too tall to sit under here where my old coffee maker was so i kind of designed myself this little coffee nook area and it works perfectly here like the when the thing goes up it's pretty high but yeah i absolutely love it you guys it works so well it brews such a nice cup of coffee and this particular style of keurig puts the water through a little bit more slowly so it saturates the coffee grounds a little bit better and it just makes a really delicious cup of coffee as you guys know i'm still using my favorite um crispy cream crispy cream crispy cream coffee house um flavored coffee and i just made myself like a nice little coffee nook excuse the little drops there's a couple drops from this morning when i made my coffee but yeah i just have this little like acrylic um container i've got a few coasters here these are such beautiful coasters i got them from uh, amazon and then I just put a little thing of flowers there and that is my little coffee. So in the morning, I just put my favorite cup there, which still has coffee from this morning. And it's just a dream. It's my favorite thing. It's like one of my favorite rituals to do in the morning, aside from my skincare, is making myself this really nice cup of coffee in my little coffee nook. And it's just like the best thing ever. And this I also almost forgot to tell you guys about. So this is from Dose & Co. This is the pure collagen, unflavored collagen peptides uh, for skin, hair, and nails. So I've already gone through one container of this. As you guys know from the past, I was using the Vital Proteins collagen peptide. So I was using the Vital Proteins in the blue container, and I was going through those pretty quickly. Like I would go through one of those a month. I really liked it. That was like my quote unquote holy grail collagen peptides, the favorite one I've ever tried. But I was at Walmart, and which is local to me and I found the Dose and & Co and I had seen a couple people talk about it and I thought okay I'm gonna give this one a shot I actually like it just as much as the vital proteins it mixes in completely um, doesn't have any taste it's very comparable to the vital proteins in terms of how fast it mixes what it tastes like what it looks like pretty much exactly the same thing what I like about this one is that the packaging is actually cuter and it's not made of plastic so they actually don't have um, any plastic in here at all as you can see here it says here's the scoop we've ditched ours we're 100% plastic free so that's pretty cool and it basically just looks like that it's just a really nice collagen powder so it doesn't come with a scoop you do have to measure it out yourself and four level teaspoons is the correct dose and there is 20 grams of collagen per serving which is awesome that's actually more protein than what was in the vital proteins and finally my last 
love for February is this discovery from Abercrombie and Fitch. So these are the curve love shorts. They're not the regular ones. What I like about these shorts, first of all, I love a pleated short. These are the perfect length. I got them in the color tan and they are a size 26. They are true to size. They're a little bit stretchy in the waist, not super stretchy. So definitely make sure that you get the right size. Do not size down in these, even though they're the curve love. And so they have a little bit more like give in the hip area. The waist is still very true to size. So because these are the curve shorts, they give you a little bit more room in your hips and in your butt. And the result is that they kind of like flow out almost in an A-line. So they make your waist look tiny and they give you a little bit more of a of an hourglass silhouette. They're incredibly flattering. I really hope that they come out with these shorts in a birch or an ecru color. As you can see in my closet, I have a lot of those type of tones. And so this is just a little bit darker because they are the color tan, but they are still very sophisticated. They have these shorts in a light pink. They have them in blue. They have them in black. And I believe they have a pinstripe. These were an instant, instant love. They're so flattering and I really recommend them. So if you're um, deciding, if you're in the market for a great pair of um, pleated tailored shorts, Check out Abercrombie and Fitch. The price is pretty good. They're a little bit more affordable than the Aritzia. Um, something comparable would be the Aritzia Wilfred Effortless Short, which I also have in my closet. I have two pairs of the Effortless Short, but the Sloan Curve Love Shorts, there it is, that's the name, the, Sl the Sloan Curve Love, something about them, they're just a little bit more feminine. Um, the Effortless Short are a little more androgynous, almost a little bit more masculine or like career looking, whereas these ones are a little bit more fun and feminine and the silhouette is just wonderful. So definitely do check out Abercrombie, you guys, if you're in the market for like really chic but casual effortless clothing. <laughs> so that is my last, last love for February. Mm -hmm.